Hi, I'm Don. I'm sure you're making your day and coming in. This is my beautiful, beautiful wife, Natasha. Thank you, thank you. You're very welcome. All right, so we're going to do, uh, we're done with uh, Matthew 24. We're going to do Matthew 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Who are the virgins? Us. Who's the bridegroom? Christ. That is second coming. And five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. What is oil? The Word of God. The oil of our people, olive oil. Where did Jesus pray the last night of his life? The Mount of Olives. I've been there. Pretty awesome, those trees. Are, some of those trees are the same trees that Christ prayed on. They're like over 2,000 years old. Amazing. So if you will think just for a second, so we're talking about oil. And oil from Hebrew, it means God. So oil, it's Allah, or Allah means God. So what's really happened that we have, first of all, it's interesting that um, this 10 virgins has been divided by five and five, right? 50-50, basically. It's not in an even number, it's basically even number. Right. And later we will see that God also divides sheep and goats also on two sides. Right. right. So keep in mind, and mainly the reason, as we mentioned previously, is you with God or you without God. Right. right. So it's not like, well, this is with God, this is without God, and there's this ones that the kind of there, maybe they are, or maybe not. No. So it's even split it with God. Or with that God. So notice that this virgin, they have lamps. Right. Lamps with oil or without oil. Right. So the souls were with God or without. without God. What's a lamp or a torch without oil? <laughs> uh, worthless? You're going to burn that wick up pretty quick, huh? But the wise took oil, the oil of our people, the olive oil, in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So everybody sleeping, waiting on the bridegroom, on Jesus Christ. And at midnight, at the end, at his coming, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out and meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamp. You know, if you trim a wick, and you know, it's been burning a while, but if you trim it, you make it new again, guess what? Torch is good. How's your wick? Good and trimmed? Good and ready for the oil of our people? Shine bright? Then those rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, Sorry, Charlie, not for you, for me. I got enough for me. So a couple of things are important to mention here, the key words. First of all, it's all happened on the midnight, right? It happened at midnight. It yes. happened when it's full darkness. So if you remember at the end of the world when 666 came, gonna come before 777, we are going to be in complete darkness, right? We're going to be as far as God than we ever been because we're going to be in the presence of Satan pretending being Christ. Right. And another key word is here that they say, first of all, they lie. They say, lamp are gone out. So in other words, we had oil, but the oil kind of gone. Well, no, at the very beginning it said they had empty lamps with right. no oil in, right? Yep. So, and then nine? Deception. Mm -hmm. But the wise answered, saying, not so. 
lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. So in other words, you know, when you stand before um, Jesus Christ, God the Father, in the judgment day, right? Uh, hey, where's my oil? Hey, uh, hey, can I borrow some oil? Hey, uh, can I bring my priest with me? Hey, can I bring my preacher with me? No. How about my mommy or my dad? No. You don't have any oil. You're worthless. Goodbye. Right? You're judged on your own. Now, if you have good works, if you have oil, if that light is bright and shining, guess what judgment day is? You know, most people kind of, they think of the great white throne judgment. They think of God's judgment and they kind of go, Boom. even Christians, right? Like, yipes! Uh-uh. If you're a Christian, you're one of God's elect, yeah. Judgment day. Great white throne judgment. Can't wait. Can't wait to be rewarded for my good works, right? Not fearful of your Father in heaven who loves you, Jesus Christ, who died, but why did he die for you? So that you can have good works, so that you can turn your life around, so that you can accept the Holy Spirit and live and be a witness for God. That's what it's all about. Of course we all fall. Of course we all sin. Get up. Brush yourself off. Repent. And get on with those good works so that you don't stand before God naked. Naked and afraid. And then to the pit you go. Right? Forever. Burned up forever. You so, don't want that. So the main question here is, how bright is your light? Right? right. So in other way, the more oil, the more God you have in your soil, the brighter your light is. And it's immediately connects us to the waiting in our righteousness gongs. If you remember previous chapters we talked about, we're going to all where gongs are uh, on front of God and the light the color of the righteousness of God is going to be depends on the work that you've done to your soul right so in other way if you think about this particular example so it tells you about people that have light have God in their soul following his commandments reading the letter following what he said and live with uh, direction of God or we have people that have no God, right. literally. They no may light. say they have no light. So, so what do you think is going to happen when we're going to be all in spiritual bodies and we're all going to have this bright garments? So the color is going to be different, right? So the brightness of your soul going to be depends on the deeds of the work that you've done on your soul. And it's exactly what's happening right now. So Jesus, remember, uh, if you're going to look at him in chapter, every sin in the right word, right? So Jesus trying to explain us that we can understand what is the kingdom of heaven like and what it's all about. So who is belong to kingdom and who is not? Right. You don't want to stand there in a jet black gown, right? No. You want, you want that thing lit up. Yep. Right. So have your ready. Yeah, that's what they'll say too when uh, uh, um, someone will see an angel or something like that. Yeah. What is an angel? Always bright. You can't even white. see it. You can't even look at it. Right. That's how bright it right. is. Right. That's why people fall on their faces. Yeah. Okay, we're at 10. 10. Mm -hmm. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Those with the oil, those knowledgeable in the word of God, make it. The others don't make it. Afterward came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, verily I say unto you, I know you not. Have we heard that before somewhere? <laughs> I think we have, huh? Yeah. Um, I can't remember exactly where it was, but Lord, Lord, did we not preach in your name? Did we not cast out devils in your name? You see those preachers all the time, right? In the name of Jesus, going crazy. Those televangelists, right? Did we not heal in your name, right? What did Jesus say? 
Exact same thing. Verily I say unto you, right? I know you not. Depart from me, you who practiced wickedness. There's more to it than throwing people down, slaying them in the spirit, and preaching the gospel of salvation over and over and over. Oh, you need to be born again. You need what you don't. You need to be born from above. That's the first lie, right? They'll sit in pews for years, right? And what are they listening to? The salvation message. The salvation message. The salvation message uh, could be summed up in a half a page, right? Repent, be baptized, that's it. Now what? You got the rest of the book? You got it? Uh, I think mine is about 2,000 pages. You sum up the, uh, you can sum up the Ten Commandments, the Law of God, and you can sum up the, the um, salvation message in the other half page. What about the rest of the Bible? What about the meat? That's the milk. There's nothing wrong with it. It's awesome. Get over it and get on with it, right? Start reading the Word of God, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, right? Precept upon precept. That's the only way you're going to know that Satan, the anti, the other Christ comes first. Because the world, billions, are going to fall for him, one right on their face. This is the Christ. This is God. Who can do works like him? Who looks like him? Who acts like him? Who's as wise as him? Nobody, right? Uh, yeah, there's another one coming five months later. And he's the real one. Remember 666, that's Satan. Six seals, six vials, six trump. Who comes in five months? The time of the locust, right? Jesus Christ, 777. He comes at the seventh seal. The seventh vial and the seventh trump. That's when Christ comes to destroy the works of the devil and those who go along with it. Don't be one that goes first. Well, you know, there was one in the, um, you hear all the time, ask any of your preachers or priests this question, and they'll all get it wrong. I guarantee it, okay? There was two in the field. One was taken, the other left. Which one do you want to be? I want to be the one taken. I want to be the one raptured. There is no rapture. You want to be the one left. You want to put on the armor of God, Ephesians 6, and you want to battle against the devil with Christ. You want to put on the whole outfit of salvation. The um, What is it? The helmet of salvation? Breastplate of righteousness. Feet shod and ready to preach the gospel. Right? The whole armor of God. Because you're not going to fly away. You don't need to know the book of Revelation. You don't need to know the Old Testament. We're going to be gone. No, we're not. It's the lie of the devil. That's what he'll be preaching. That's what Antichrist will be preaching. The rapture. And so if you're going to look at the key words here, so let's start with um, the answer of the wise um, version. They said, buy for yourself. Right? Remember, yourself. You're right. going to stand on the front of your father by yourself. Right? It's kind of right. interesting, right? It's kind of clear in words. Right. So uh, there's no one around. It's just you. So you have to have the lamp full of oil for your father, or full of God commandments, knowledge, what is going on, what is happening. Or another way, look another word, the door was shut. Right. No, and, and, and Forever. It, and, it, and it's interesting because, um, yes, God is merciful, God is love, but God is not ready to accept you when your deeds are not aligning with His um, energy level, with His um, love, that, that what He is. So in other way, there's a conflict between you and your soul that is empty, and God. So it's very, very simple. There's simply no alignment. So the door was shut. And it doesn't matter how many times they ask, please open to us. Jesus said, I know you not. And last advice, he's from this chapter. He's saying, watch therefore, because you do not know what is going to happen. So in other way, your soul has to be um, has, has to be uh, full with God's thoughts and God's commandments and good deeds all the time. 
Right. It's not like it's just like, okay, now we know Jesus is coming for sure. Let's clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, it's time. It's yeah, time. it's time to give my yes. soul to God yeah. and clean everything up. You don't give your soul to God. You don't give your soul to the devil. Your soul is already God's. All souls are mine. Say the Lord. But what can you do with your soul? You can prepare your soul in condition that is acceptable to God. And there is kingdom of heaven. That's what Jesus is trying to explain. I want to show you what kingdom of heaven is about. And uh, watch therefore. Because you do not know when I'm going to come. And I want for you to be ready. I want your lambs to be full of oil or full of God wisdom knowledge and god power right and to just kind of interject to think about kind of like the the personality of god well god is love right so god loves everyone right wrong big time wrong you think god loves satan the devil god hates satan the devil with a fervent passion Jacob I loved in the womb. Esau, his brother, twin brother, I hated. Why? He knew him in the first earth. That sounds cruel, huh? Sounds cruel again, right? A child in the womb hasn't done right or wrong yet, innocent, and God hates that child? Yeah, why? Ask your preachers, why? It doesn't make sense. They don't like to, they don't like to cover that chapter, right? Why they don't have an answer. They know nothing about the first earth age at all. Esau was in the first earth age. So were you. So was Satan. So was Jacob. So was Abraham. So was Adolf Hitler. So was Charles Manson. Everybody was there. What'd they do? You know what they did? You could tell what they're doing here by what they did there, right? For the most part, you know, the reason God brought us through the woman, our mothers, through the water, when, you, when your mother is water breaks, you're born as a human being, innocent. Even when Adolf Hitler was born, he was born innocent. Charles Manson was born innocent. They just went along with their original nature and their original character, which was satanic, which was evil. So is it possible that what, like the Kenites, right? The Kenites are of their father, we know John 44. Kenites are of their father, the devil. Can they repent? They sure can. Is it easy for them? No, because they have so much satanic nature in them. But yes, they can, that's why we're all here. This is a test, good or bad, good or evil. This is the time to work on your soul, and regardless how bad your soul was in the first first age, there's a time to make your soul better and right. get to the level that you will be able to sustain God in the third first age versus uh, reverse. And 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two talents, and to another one, one. To every man according to his several ability. Does God know you? God knows you like the back of his hand, right? Does God know your abilities? Yes, he does. Does he know your strengths? He knows that. Does he know your weaknesses? Got it all. So he gave these talents unto these men as according to their ability. So he already knew the guy he's given five talents to is really sharp. He's going to make a lot of money, right? And he knew the guy he gave two talents to was pretty sharp. Not as sharp as the guy with five. But he knew he was, he was okay. He was a good guy. He knew the guy he gave one talent to, right? Was a loser. Why he was there, I don't know. Well, for the, uh, hey, for the parable. Well, uh, because they're people. 
right? right so basically, people. remember, we um, we listen in Jesus as he's trying to, dis uh, trying to describe for us kingdom of heaven. How's the kingdom of heaven like? Well, we have people. We have all kind of people with all kind of ability. It just God knows what ability we have. Right. Right? God knows and what we are. And what responsibility we can handle. Right. How many times, you know, you did something when you were a kid, your mom or your dad said, you know, if you do that, this is going to happen, blah, 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 right? No, nah, that's not going to happen. Uh, and what happens? You go do whatever you're going to do. And, oh, my mom was right. My dad was right. Why? They know you. They know what you're going to do. They know. I mean, do they know every move you're going to make? No. Does God know every move you're going to make? No. Who would want that? How gross would that be? Big rerun, this is a big rerun movie? No, it's not a big rerun movie. It's life we're living through now. But God knows your abilities. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. A hundred percent, hundred percent, I don't want to call it income, but 100% in your, on your investment. I would say it's a return on your investment. It's a 100%, not 80, not 90, not 99, 100% return on your investment. I think he did pretty good, pretty sharp. His, his master was right. He knew him. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained Another two, 100%, well done. Maybe this guy kind of surprised God a little bit. I knew he was good, I didn't know he was that good, right? 100% is good. Ask any investor, hey, I'd like to make 100% on my money. <laughs> Who wouldn't, right? Here's $10 million, I want uh, $20 million at the end of the year, right? I don't think that's gonna happen. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth. He dug a hole. That's his first mistake. And hid, hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants come and reckoned with them. Time to pay up. And so he that had received five talents came and brought another five talents, saying, Lord, Thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Right on. See, like Judgment Day, right? That's what you want to hear from God, yeah, right? Exactly right? Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter in to the promise that I've, that I've made for those I love, right? Not depart from me. He who practiced wickedness, enter in. Well done. Come on in. His Lord said unto him, Well done, a good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Can't wait, huh? He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. He doubled his money. He can't beat that. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Why? He trust him. He can trust this guy. Why? He proved himself. He can trust the guy with five talents. Why? He proved himself. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, 
and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went, I was what? Here's, here's the first problem, right? You know, if I say up, you say down. If I say black, you say white. If I say north, you say south. If I say love, you say hate, right? Wrong. If I say hate, you say fear, right? Fear is not trusting in God. Fear is not believing any of his promises. Fear is the exact opposite of faith or love. What's greater than faith? One thing, love, right? Love, hope, and faith, Corinthians 13. But the greatest is what? Love. Love conquers all. And the worst thing of all, fear. You can't be perfected in love if you have fear. You can't fear. Satan brings fear. God brings love, um, a boldness, right? You've got power over all your enemies. You've got power over Satan to rebuke him and his demons, right? Evil spirits, rebuke them. They're in your house, get them out. Anoint your house with olive oil and pray. And they will leave. In the, never forget, in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't forget the main part, the, the olive oil school. The name of Jesus Christ, very simple. Whatever those guys who, um, they went into some demonic, some demonics where they were, I don't know if they're in a house or cave or out in the wilderness, but they went and, and they said something like, uh, they didn't know, they didn't have the Holy Spirit and they didn't know Jesus, but they knew of Jesus. And they knew Jesus could cast out demons, right? Um, so the guys went in, I don't know how many there were, there were a few guys, and they went in, uh, you know, we cast thee out in the name of that Jesus guy, right? A Jesus that Paul preached, or Jesus and blah, blah, blah. What did the demons do? Jesus we know. Paul we know. Who are you? And they just beat, they just beat the crap out of them, okay? And what those guys go doing, they ran out of that house, wherever they were, naked. The demons ripped all their clothes off and beat them to a pole, right? In the name of Jesus, always. Healing, casting out demons, evil spirits, in the name and by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. And then guess what? They're, they can be pretty mean and, na and sound nasty. And they can kind of make you, you know, give you goosebumps, right? Rebuke them and get them out. You've got the power. Don't let them be afraid. Don't be afraid of them. They're afraid of you. But you got to exercise that power. 26. <clears throat> His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and lazy. God hates lazy, slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, at least put it in the bank. And then at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. Would have made a little interest. Wouldn't have, you wouldn't have doubled my money, but I would have made a little more. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath four talents. Let's make him even. Let's level the playing field, as some of our presidents like to talk about. Uh-uh. Not leveling the playing field. Not robbing from the rich to give to the poor so that everybody's miserable and poor. That's not what he's talking about. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. Well, it doesn't seem very, far, very fair. It is fair. It's smart. It's good business. It's good conservative, conservative capitalism. Right? Use your head. Okay, so basically we um, 
are looking uh, for this explanation, right? Uh, this basically passage is saying that God expects actions. Right. God expects for you to do things with your soul, with your um, life. So in other way, uh, we can play safe, right? Just exactly like this gentleman and go and uh, hide somewhere in a cave and just sit there and do nothing all our life and basically say, God, hey, I received soul from you and here's my soul back to you and it's pretty much, uh, pretty much untouched, right? However, we know that we send on a second earth age to improve the quality of our soul. Why? Because we came here, all of us came here sinners. What does it mean? Well, this means our garlands not bright and light. This means our lamp, uh, oil in our lamp is not as bright as it should be. It means simply we're not ready for that wedding and we don't have the beautiful garland ready yet. Right. So we have to do something, right? God expects actions to improve, right? The improvement of two talents to four, five talents to, te to 10, the improvement of the brightness of your soul, the brightness of your righteous garland. That's what God expects. So with everything that uh, uh, life throwing at you and all kind of situation, opportunities and challenges, we have to work on it for what? Well, for that day when we're going to stand in front of God right. and we we'll look at our God and we're like, man, I did good, right? Right. <laughs> and guess what, what God going to say? The same like what um, he told Jesus, well, this is um, my perfect son in whom I well please. Right. This is my perfect daughter and whom I well please. And that's probably going to be the best day of your life because you're like, I did it. <laughs> I'm finally, I'm there. I have arrived. I arrived and I arrived good. Right. Right? Exactly. <laughs> so that's basically the best you already probably can get. And there's something to work for, something to look forward to. Right. Something to look for. Again, God doesn't like lazy, right? And you know, lately that in this country, the government has, you know, they give you the, um, what is it like? Not social security, welfare. Okay, yes. you get the welfare. Oh, then we're gonna give you a boost on your welfare. We're gonna give you another 300 bucks. Oh, and then we're gonna give you, and what are these people doing? Sitting on their rear ends on their couch, drinking their beer, eating their potato chips. Uh, not work. Why should, you know, what's the excuse? Why should I work? when I can make the same amount of money or more money just sitting here on my ever-growing butt watching TV, right? Wrong, American. You're not a pig, you're a human being, right? You're supposed to have a little dignity, a little pride. You know, I can remember just the World War, I don't remember the, well, I remember the World War II vets as they were older. Right? I wasn't there in 46. I came in in 57. So let's say 67, 68, 69, 70, whatever. I can just remember older people, right? Nobody ever that came out of World War II, experienced World War II, the last thing they're going to do is take any kind of handout from anyone. One way or another, they're going to make it. They're an American. God bless America, right? And Americans had pride and dignity and worked their rear ends off to make this country what it is. Now we're just totally destroying it with our socialist communistic thinking at an astronomical rate. Unbelievable. Don't get caught up in it. Yeah, Satan's on his way, obviously. Greatest country on earth is going straight to hell, right? Don't get caught up in it, because billions will. The whole world will be deceived very soon. I think the whole world is deceived right <laughs> Forget Satan. I think most people are pretty deceived right now. Well, the answer from Jesus is watch therefore, right? You right. have to distinguish yourself you have to separate yourself from whatever makes your righteousness 
not righteous enough. <laughs> right. right. Hey, close butt, no cigar. Yeah. You don't want to go there. So just watch. Watch yeah. how things affect in your life. Watch how people surround you affect in your life. Watch your own deeds, how they affect in your life. And uh, try to understand that you think that you're going to have time forever. No, we no. don't. And all the signs are right there for you right now. Open your eyes, uh, look at one day of TV, and that would be enough for you to know that all the signs are here. Right. And if we have another five years, Maybe seven. Lucky <laughs> us. Lucky us. Yeah, we're not setting dates, but I mean, just look around. Yeah. yeah. The the fruit the fruit is rotten, falling off the trees. Hey, so you know, it reminds me of Jesus when he was. Uh, well, he, he I think it was the maybe the um, Sermon on the Mount between Matthew five and seven, but he said when they ask for your robe, give them your cloak also right give them more there um back in those days like a roman centurion you know carries a lot of weight right he's got his he's got all his um uh, you know uh, protection stuff his swords now let's say he's got something else to carry right he would grab anyone any jew any um possibly even roman citizen right and say here carry this for me and the the, the uh, normal distance that one person would help a centurion carry something is a mile. Jesus said, when they ask you to go a mile with them, go to Right? Yeah. Over and above the call of duty. That's a real American. That's a real Christian. So right? show your character, right? Show what your you character. Sta- what you stand for. Right. And what God again, God expects your actions and He's going to judge you according to your actions and according to your works and according to your deeds and your life on your soul. Right. And uh, uh, 29. 29. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and to he and he shall have abundance. United States, after World War II, we fed the world. We didn't borrow a penny. We didn't borrow 35 trillion. It's insane. We borrowed nothing. We lent to the world. We fed the world. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Why? He had the word of God. Everybody, some you can get a hold of a Bible. Get a hold of a Bible and start reading and shuddering for the truth. You'll succeed. You'll be blessed. Why? It's all about God's promises, right? Given, it shall be given. Pressed down, shaken together, bubbling over, right? You got to give a little to get a lot. And 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm not gonna like that. So, so what is the key word here? The key word is the unprofitable servant, right? Right. So basically whatever is given to you, you've done nothing with this. Here's your life. Right. You have your life, you have a chance in the second earth age to improve your soul. And what you you did, you've done nothing unprofitable. What means unprofitable? I'll give you one talent and you still have one. If you sold it in this condition and you did not improve the soul anywhere better, you're unprofitable. You've done nothing with what God gave to you. God gave you life. And you take it so lightly. You're not appreciated. You're not uh, understanding. You're not comprehending that your life is your own abundance if you work on this, if you want to improve, and if you want to get better. Remember, free will that we all have should take us where we should be in the inequality of our soul, but again, if we're willing to work on this.
yeah. and then it's going to be judged. So, so we basically went um, through two interesting um, stories from from um, Jesus talking about the kingdom of heaven, and now we're going to go to the third one, the last one of this chapter. Thirty-one. When the you know, let me interject real quick. You know, if you're in Africa or you're in India and you're, you know, you're uh, defecating and pissing in your water supply, right? And you've got nothing but disease and skinny little arms and legs and bloated stomach. That's, that's a whole nother situation, right? How much can those people do? They're trying to survive. But if you're an American, a healthy, red-blooded American, uh, what's your excuse? Lazy. You know, um, I've told you this before, but I listened to this one preacher. I listen to all kinds of preachers. But this one guy goes, you know what? Um, <clears throat> he was talking about, you know, just uh, um, attitude. Uh, what are you going to do? He goes, you know, if I had nothing, you know what I'd do? I'd go find a job at McDonald's. You know, start off as low as I can because I have to, right? Yeah. And I would do my job and I would do it as unto the Lord. And then you know what would happen? The manager would look at me and go, "You know what? This guy's sharp. You're gonna be the you're gonna be the uh, assistant manager, and I'd be the best assistant manager they ever had. Why? Because I'm not working as under man. I'm not a man pleaser. I'm not leaning on the shovel until the boss comes, and then oh boy, there I go. I'm going all the time. I don't care who's watching, right? God's watching always. Okay, and then after that." I would become one of the managers of that McDonald's. And then after that, I'd own that McDonald's. Because I worked my way, and I worked, and I worked, put my nose to the grindstone, and never stopped. How many people do that nowadays? Uh, I don't know any. <laughs> I mean, I know some people that are pretty sharp, and work hard. I know a few, not many. I mean, if you can't beat out your average idiot Joe Blow, who's just working for the weekend and partying, come on, wake up. Well, the thread is in two roads. One is very narrow and mm -hmm. another very wide. Right? Not so many people that you can rely on, you can trust to. No. You can lean on if you have to. Mm -hmm. There's not too many. That's right. why the, 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 narrow, uh, the narrow road and the wide road are very different and they live in a totally opposite directions. Right. And if you're a Christian, you're working hard, what's the guarantee, what's the promise? God will bless you. How do you bless a physical, a physical person on a physical earth? With physical blessings. That's right here. And of course health, right? He shall have abundance. Abundance. Abundance in what? Money. Things. Everything. Don't let it go to your head. Everything. Right. But you, you know, work hard, you'll get paid. When you think in abundance, abundance is such a beautiful word because it includes anything that makes your heart sing. It can be money for one person, but it can be totally something different for another person. But the point mm -hmm. is, whatever that abundance in your eyes is, you're going to have it. Why? Because that's going to bring your heart in a different level. That's what is going to make your heart sing. And God will definitely award you with that abundance because He's done the job with your soul as He asked you for. And we at 32. 30, I'll say, uh, let's do 31 again. 31. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory and all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory forever, casting out, burning all evil. Starting with Satan. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another, as the shepherd divided his sheep from his goats. You know, it's kind of funny. Um, Natasha asked me the other day, like, like, what's the difference in like a sheep and a goat? For one thing, the sheep represent his. My sheep know my voice. They're good shepherd, right? 
And you know what? If you're a shepherd, your sheep, you're gonna have a thousand of them. Guess what? They know your voice. They know you're the good shepherd taking care of them. Another shepherd, they don't know. They don't know his voice, they won't follow him because they don't know him, whether he's bad or good. The sheep knows the shepherd, right? An ox can go out grazing. It knows where the barn is, right? Where to come back to? It's kind of interesting to think about two different characters of two sim very similar animals, if you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. So we receive uh, wool from sheep, right? And we receive milk and, and uh, cheese, cheese from, goats. from the goats. But their character, like if you will characterize the sheep, is right. so different than goats. Right. So the sheep, they're going to follow the shepherd, just said, right? Right. Every goat is going to jump up and down and <laughs> Do go on the thing. mountain and whatever they go and you know. Right. Like once I was on the playground and they just slide in. Uh, apparently there were two goats around. We, I was on the pro order in uh, uh, at that time and it was the children playground and then the two goats out of nowhere sliding together with us and they literally going up the steps and they slide down and they go around and they do it again and again and again. So what I'm saying, the, the, the characteristic of those two animals are very, very different, right? right. But somehow, uh, God prefer somebody who discipline, right? And somebody who follow the shepherd. Right. Verse of the, uh, verse of the, uh, this random goats then jumping all over the place and do not have discipline to follow the word of God. Right. And another characteristic that I notice when you go to those uh, petting zoos, you get, usually you got sheep and goats, right? You might have a pig in there, here and there, but generally it's sheep and goats, right? Mm -hmm. What do the goats always do? There's always something like a box or a rock or something. What do the goats do every time? What does the head goat do? Jumps up on that rock, jumps up on that bike. You don't, you don't see sheep do that. Why? And what's the other ghost trying to do? Get up there and knock him off. What does he do? Knock them down, right? They don't have those horns for nothing, right? They're, I'm the king, I'm the boss. That goat up there, he's got a lot of pride, right? That doesn't like that kind of pride. <laughs> he doesn't care about goats. <laughs> they kind of represent, you know, I'm the king of the cow. I'm the king of my rock here. No one else coming up. Okay. And well. fit 36? 33. Oh, 33. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. You always want to fish to the right. You always want to be on the right. But the goats, representing the evil ones, where? On his left. You don't want to be left. You don't want to be a leftist. Leftists and communists and socialists tend to start to leave God out, right? God don't like that. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, where Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, not the left, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. What is meat? We were talking about it before. You know, the milk of the word is good. Salvation, baptism, laying on of hands. That's all good. Now what? Meat, get over the milk. You can't live on milk. You gotta have meat. The word of God, verse by verse, precept by precept, chapter by chapter. That's what we're doing here. We've been going through the whole book of Matthew. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came in to me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw 
we the sick or in prison and came unto thee and the king shall answer and say unto them verily I say unto you inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren ye have done it unto me you know it reminds me we're all the same right to the least of the brethren what does God say when you throw a big party and none of your big shot friends come? Open it up to the streets, right? Invite anyone. Let them come in. They'll appreciate it. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, want a psycho murderer, but I mean a normal, maybe a poor person, someone that's not of real great esteem. They'll thank you. They'll be appreciative. Yeah. Right? I agree. A lot of your rich friends, eh, don't have time. Another party, whatever. Party to know. Yeah. They don't care, some. But the, the poorer people, right? The people of low esteem that are decent people, man, they'll raise you up. And you actually have such a better time with them because they're just so appreciative, so right. sweet, so kind. Right, just, yeah. Just beautiful. Nothing like somebody that appreciates what you're doing instead of takes advantage of it. And most in my life, they've taken a, a lot of advantage. I can count the people on one hand that are good people. The rest, uh, I can't count them all. They're uncountable. All right. Um, go ahead. And to are 41. 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me. Where? The left. The leftists. Depart from me. Ye cursed into everlasting fire. Oh, they're going to burn forever? No, they're not going to burn forever. But they're going up. They're going out into eternity. Ashes. There's nothing left of them. The wicked shall be what? Ashes under the righteous man's feet. Right? Some religions believe God's just going to burn and burn and burn. <laughs> For one thing, if your spirit had you burn and burn forever, you know, you wouldn't even feel it. But he does destroy the wicked. He destroys their spirit. He destroys their soul. He destroys their spiritual body. Poof. Because he can do it. But we don't burn and burn forever now. And nobody comes in once in a while and sticks you with a pitchfork. Right? Right. What a weird God that would be. That's, a, that's Satan that thinks that way. Prepared, okay. Prepared for the devil and his angels, the fire. For I was hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when? Just like the ones who did righteous. When did we see this? When did we see the hunger? Or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to the one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. You know, when Jesus fed the 5,000, guess what? Jesus didn't feed the 5,000. Jesus blessed the two fish and the five loaves. That's all Jesus did. And what did he say? You. You go feed them. Who fed the people? The disciples. With 12 basketfuls of food left over. After two fish and five loaves of bread, I'd say that was some blessing on the meal. Wouldn't you? Yeah. We do the works. God provides the bricks. We build the house. Right? We've got to do something. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. But the righteous and the life eternal. So again, 
the God show the contrast between people that gave love, they gave kindness, they gave compassion, and people that did not give love, didn't give, uh, give compassion, didn't, uh, didn't uh, give their kindness to others, right? And in all of this is God, because God is love, God is a compassion, God is kindness. So, because remember, God is the highest existed vibration. You can't look at God. Why? Because it's so bright and light. The intensity of that vibration is so high, your physical eye cannot sustain. Right. And that vibration is vibration of love and kindness and compassion. And that's what God asked for us. So he said, I want to see your deeds full of this then you're going to be in my kingdom and then you're going to have righteousness into life right amen and the evil go into what everlasting punishment what's the punishment you're not there you're not there for right you chose the pit that's where you're going you burn there's um, a verse in the Bible that says, and the wicked go up in smoke and ashes like the fat of a lamb. You know, you're cooking a big old side of beef or a lamb, something like that. What happens? The fat starts to bubble out, right? And the fat falls down on the coals. What do you hear? <coughs> and smoke, right? That will be the evil at Judgment Day, the great white throne judgment. Yeah, the wicked, because the when, wicked. when um, that servant that was unprofitable, God talks about the servant being wicked. So what means wicked? It means that he thought through and he decided to do nothing. It's not like you tried and didn't work out, right? It's not like you did it again and you did something wrong and you learn less, lessons from this and you keep on moving. Right. right. No repentance. It's not the point. It's not like God punished this guy because he ended up with one talent because he was trying but it didn't work out. No, he's wickedly. He, you know, decided to yeah. take this, uh, take this talent, do nothing about it, right? Being absolutely lazy, right? And do absolutely nothing about that God asked him to do. So that is what keep in mind. So it's not like you will say, well, what if I try and I'm not succeed? It's okay. Try, but, try but again. But you, as long as you try and you steal through all these experiences and lessons that life throwing to you, your character is going to become stronger. And guess what? You become a better person. You become a new you. And your light is going to be brighter and brighter and brighter. And, Amen. And, so, and, so. That's, and that's the whole purpose of that, everything right. that we do. <laughs> That's the whole enchilada, okay. right? No and, lazy. And we want to thank you so much. We have only two chapters to go. So super excited, 27 and 28, to finalize Matthew. And after that, we're going to... The book of Revelation. The book that nobody understands. The book you don't have to know because you're going to be raptured away. Wrong. This is going to be fun. This is going to be... You know, the book of Revelation is, there's a lot, a lot of it is symbolic and a lot, that doesn't mean it's not real. There's just things that, you know, what are waters, waters, water, you know, and then, uh, you know, the Lord moved upon the waters. Okay, the waters in Revelation are the people, the seas, seas of people, the nations, right? There's certain things you have to understand. The seals, the vials, the trumps, what do they represent? You know, you, you really can't understand the book of Revelation unless you understand what these things mean, what they are. And then guess what? The book of Revelation opens right up. So simple a child could understand it. But when you've got so many, especially on the book of Revelation, so many opinions and doctrines of men and churches, there's no way you'll ever understand the book of Revelation. Forget it. Don't well, even start. We're definitely going to pray um, that God will give us wisdom to understand. And we're going to keep our minds open that God can open His wisdom to us. 
Right. And for today, but thank you so very much, and we'll see you shortly. All right. All right. See you later.